Hey, hello, welcome everyone to the course. So this is going to be the first ever video lecture of this whole course. And my name is Teja, you might be already knowing me. So I am going to be your instructor or teacher. Well, whatever you like to call me for this whole course, I'm going to be the one teaching you. So uh, I'll start off this course by, you know, talking a little bit about this course. Well, you might, uh, you might uh, have read the description already, but uh, once again, anyways, I'm going to talk about what this course is about and all that stuff. So, uh, this course is uh, to all those people out there who want to learn programming language. Uh, what programming language? Doesn't matter. Any programming language. Uh, for all those people who want to learn programming in common and don't know where to start from, like don't know what to uh, start learning, uh, or how to start learning programming and all that stuff, this course is for you. And it is also for those people who already know programming languages, who already have some experience in programming languages, but uh, they were not quite able to write their own logic, write their own code for any given situation or for any given problem or all that stuff so if you are any of these two kinds of people then this course is just for you and thanks for take, taking this course this is the first course that I'm making and I'm expecting uh, this course to be a good course because I'm trying my best to do this as uh, good as possible for all those viewers who have took this course so once again welcome to this course and let's start this course right away so i'll start this course by asking you a simple question why should you learn programming yeah just take your time think about it you can pause the video here think about it and come with an answer why should you learn programming so if your answer is something like to pass or score good in the coding examinations in your school or university then I should tell you, you are not in the right spirit to learn programming languages. I mean, yeah, of course you can score good or you, you can pass or even score good in the coding examinations in your school or college or university, but uh, that won't make you excel in programming. Because uh, if you learn programming with this spirit of just uh, for the sake of exams, that's going to make programming a boring and a difficult uh, job for you to learn and to implement. So if you really want to learn programming, learn it this way. Learn it if you are really interested in it. Uh, I mean, programming is not the only s topic in, in the whole world that is uh, you know useful or something. There are lots of other things. You are free to find the interest you, you like, like the fields you're interested in and you can go on with those fields but if you have chosen programming then that's why you probably took this course and uh, if you are learning if you're taking this course i suggest you to not be in this spirit of just learning programming to just pass or score good in the coding examinations but if you are not convinced yet and if i once again ask you the question why should you learn programming and you cannot think of any other answer except to pass or score good in the coding examinations well, don't worry, you're not in the right track, but I will try my best to, you know, make programming one of the things in your interests list. And I will try to make programming very interesting for you so that you, you really literally enjoy learning programming and enjoy writing your own programs and enjoy learning new things about programming. So hopefully by the end of this course, you will be reaching that point that that ideal point where you know you can enjoy while writing code and you can learn new things about writing code and one more thing about programming is that it's always a learning process you cannot be completely good in programming there is always room for you to improve, especially when it comes to programming, because there are always new languages coming, uh, new techniques coming, new libraries coming, uh, all that stuff, and you will have to cope up with them, and you'll have to keep learning and keep practicing, you know, to be good in programming. And uh, the journey literally never stops. You just have to keep learning. And if you ask me, what's the best, uh, best? thing in a programmer then i mean what's the best thing that makes a programmer best sorry for my broken english so i will say that you need to be really 
a good learner in order for you to be a good programmer because you have to really learn new things and you will understand it uh, throughout this course while the course continues so now moving on why should you write code so one more last question why should you write code well uh, the perfect answer for this would be this by writing code you can make a computer do whatever you want like automating your tasks storing and processing information etc now after reading this statement you might be asking me why is it necessary for us to use a computer in the first place like why can't we just hire a person i mean a human person instead of uh, dealing with computers like instead of spending my money on a computer why can't i just hire a human to do the tasks for me well i'll answer you that question computers are really good at doing complex things in a matter of milliseconds now we all know that computers are machines they work on electricity and uh, they are really fast and i don't even know how to describe how fast computers are uh, for example if you uh, if you are to do a task uh, that usually takes you like up to 3 to 4 hours to complete the task you can write a program you can write a simple computer program in under 5 minutes and you can make a computer do the same task which took you usually 4 to 5 hours and you can make your computer do the same task in a matter of milliseconds literally in a matter of milliseconds i'm not even over exaggerating literally milliseconds is what uh, computers usually take to do tasks for you so yes uh, i think you've got the answer to your question computers can do complex things faster and better than humans and if you are doing a complex task yourself there is a probability there is a uh, high probability that you might commit some mistakes but it's not the case with computers computers strictly follow your code strictly follow the code you have written and they strictly execute it so obviously if your code has some error in it obviously computer is, computer is also going to do an error in in the task but if your code is perfect and your code does what you want it to do then computers don't make any mistakes like humans do and once and once again computers are really fast and they take a really 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 uh less time really acceptable time to solve uh, any particular task and in most of the cases computers can also do the tasks that are literally not practically possible for humans to do so uh, i'll take this forward and i'll give you a challenge try writing down all the prime numbers between 2 and 10000 so let's say you do not have a computer with you or you just don't have uh, you just don't want to use your computer to do this task because you were like oh i can do this myself i don't need the help of a machine so anyways just go ahead and write down all the prime numbers between 2 and 10000 and if you don't know what is meant by a prime number then a prime number is basically a number that is only divisible by itself and by the number 1 and not by any other number So go ahead and try writing the prime numbers between 2 and 10000 and do not waste more of your time in this I just just uh, you know an example to show you why computers are doing good things well you know what don't don't even try it don't even try it it's going to take a lot of time for you because in order to uh, list down or write down all the prime numbers between 2 and 10000 what you will have to do is you have to take each number starting from 2 because i've uh, say I, i've told you that the range is between 2 and 10000 so you will have to take each number starting from 2 and see if it is divisible by any other number except itself on 1 So if any number is divisible by any other number except itself on one then that means that the number is not a prime number so you'll have to do this you have to test this you have to test uh, all these numbers between 2 and 10000 and you have to write down only the prime numbers so you will have to use tons of paper obviously because it's uh, between 2 and 10000 so it involves a lot of calculation and so you you'll need lots of paper lots of ink and all that stuff so that's not the problem the main problem is that you might commit mistakes you are more prone to committing mistakes because humans tend to make mistakes and another thing is that this task would take you literally a lot of time and if you ask me i would take it at least 
I'm very bad at math, so I take at least five hours. I think. Oh, five hours is. I don't know. I don't. I can't even assume the amount of time I would take to solve this task without a computer. But it's literally going to take a lot. It's literally going to take forever to solve this task. Whereas, if you just write it, uh, uh, I mean, if you just write a program, a simple program, to do this in a programming language, uh, it would take less than five minutes to write a program that would do this task. And you can just be like, after writing the program, you can just be like, hit enter and bam, all the numbers, all the prime numbers between one to 10,000 or two to 10,000 appears on the screen right away in a matter of milliseconds. I mean, milliseconds. You can just go ahead and try it yourself by you know searching on the internet for a program to list out all the prime numbers. You can just copy that code, execute it, and you can see how how much time your computer actually took it. Even though you have a very old computer, it would just take not more than milliseconds to solve this task. So this is one example and let me talk about another one. Let's say you're working in a com company or an organi organization as a superior to other employees, kind of like a team leader or a boss, something like that. Just imagine, imagination is free. Right, so you want to, let's say you want to store all the information about all the em employees in your company, including their names, age, salary, work hours, etc. So if you don't have a computer or you don't want to use a computer, what you will have to do is you'll have to use a pen and paper. You will have to literally sit down, take lots of paper and you will have to call each employee and you will have to collect information from them like their name age, salary, work hours, and all that, etc. So you'll have to take your paper, you'll have to draw lines, you'll have to separate the columns like name, age, salary, etc. And you'll have to call each employee and ask them what's your name, what's your, all that stuff, and you'll have to write it down. And imagine if your company is a large company and it has like um, 30,000 employees, well, that's a nightmare. Like if someone asks me to do this task without a computer, I would just resign my job right away. So uh, yeah, anyways, this is going to take a lot of time uh, when you have no computers or you don't want to use a computer. So what you can do is you can simply write a program. And by writing a program, uh, you know, you could, you could just, you know, create a link, create a web page, uh, something like that, like a form or something. And you can just l send this link to all the employees in your company or organization and you can ask them to fill in their details using the link that you have sent. And once you once they open that link, they will be seeing a form and they can fill all those details. And when they click submit, all this data will be added to a database and the, the whole task will be done in a matter of minutes. I mean, based on, it all depends obviously on the time that the employees take to fill their details in the form, but it's going to take a lot less time, like a minute or so. And then coding is fun. Don't you agree? Like after all this, uh, all this stuff that I've spoken, don't you still agree coding is fun? Well, how are you watching this video in the first place? You probably are watching this on a website. So you opened the website, you logged in with your credentials, that is your username and password. And then you logged in, This, uh, this sh the website showed you the course page with the video. So you open the video, you are able to pause the video, you're able to increase or decrease the volume of the video, and you're able to do all that kind of stuff, right? So how is this all possible? Because it's all a program. This website is just code. Yes, it's just code written by a developer. And this code, you can see what it's enabling you to do. It's, it's, it's allowing you to log in first and it's showing the course page and it's uh, showing the video, it's playing the video for you, all that stuff. So computers are all doing this and how are they doing this? It's because a developer have written a code and have instructed the computer to do this. Anyways, going on, uh, coolest things you can do by writing code. So while preparing for this course, I thought of some coolest things that you could do by writing code. And I came up with some of the points. Uh, you can build AI voice assistants, uh, which can really talk to you 
like a human does. For example, you have this Google Voice Assistant or Siri if you are using an iPhone or uh, basically Apple products. So these are all AI voice assistants, which means they can, uh, they can listen to you and they can talk to you just like how a human talks to you. They make use of uh, artificial intelligence and deep learning to do this. And it's all just program, it's, ju it's all just you know code and uh, they were able to simulate your conversation and make a good conversation with you, do tasks for you on your commands and all that stuff. And then you can diagnose patients. So computers are really used a lot in medical area. Like for example, they're used uh, you know, to diagnose cancer cells and to, to tell if a particular person has a cancer or not. Not only cancer, but anything. Uh, in medical area, computers are being used a lot. And it's, a, it's actually a really good thing that computers are used to save the lives of people. Like, look at how critical computers can be. They, they can be very useful, they can be life-saving. Literally, life-saving. And then, you can build rockets, robots, etc. So, uh, I mean, you can build rockets, that's, what is what is more cooler than a rocket right it goes into the space literally so trust me everything like even building rockets or robots or everything it has to do with programming it has to do with the simple basic concepts of programming that you are going to learn in this course so the basics are the most important thing what you will need to possess in order to build rockets or robots or in order to create AI voice assistants, machine learning, artificial intelligence software, anything in order to build any of these things, what you need to know is programming. The basics of programming and the ability for you, ability of you to write an algorithm to solve simple things or complex things and to convert that algorithm into a program and make your computer execute that program uh, by using the least possible resources as uh, as possible and it is all just simple building rockets robots all this stuff it all it all has to do with the simplest things of programming so yeah i hope that's the end of this uh, video lecture and i hope i've given you uh, a little insight about why you should actually learn coding and why you should write code and why coding is fun and all that stuff so hope you are a little bit inspired by this all and i'm looking forward uh, for the next video lesson so i'll meet you in the next video lesson so yeah come right up